Banks' success depends on trust. We trust our banks to look after our earnings and to give good advice. However, following the financial crisis, money laundering and trading scandals, our trust in banks has fallen to an all-time low. And now brands such as Apple and Virgin are filling the trust vacuum. So how can banks respond before it's too late? To start rebuilding trust, banks need first to apologize. My friend and business partner Robin Rice is adamant about this point. If a friend stole money from you and gave you bad advice, the very least you'd expect is an apology. In July 2008, just before Lehman Brothers collapsed, my bank advised me to purchase a house and exchange the mortgage from euros to Swiss francs, where I was earning my salary. Following the financial crisis and massive drop in exchange rates, my mortgage is now worth more than it was when I bought it nine years later. This advice has cost me hundreds of thousands of francs. Have I received an apology? Not yet. And I'm just one out of hundreds of thousands in a similar or worse situation. After apartheid ended in South Africa, Nelson Mandela initiated the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Many attribute this drawn-out apology with preventing civil war from filling the power vacuum created. In Iceland, greedy bank execs were jailed. Now, this may not happen in the rest of the world, so it will be up to individual bank executives to look deep inside themselves and ask, did we really do the best in the interest of our customers? And if not, is an apology due? Second, develop a vision that goes beyond profit. Paul Palman at Unilever and Richard Branson at Virgin, and most recently Leonardo DiCaprio, have done this by focusing on climate change. What can banks do? Putting customers first isn't enough. How can they provide the financial foundation on which to tackle the world's biggest challenges? How can they contribute to society and enrich our lives? How can they become good global citizens like Tesla, Virgin, or Unilever? Looking beyond profit, may be the best way to regain the trust and revitalize their profits. Three, align the mindset and the skill set with the vision. At Virgin, enabling employees to serve customers better is the first priority. Today's leading organizations instill self-belief in their employees, then elevate skills such as creativity, collaboration, and conflict resolution. They know engaging employees doesn't work. Gallup's recent survey shows only 13% of employees globally engaged. Too many get demotivated and leave. The solution is simple. Today, we work to grow, not just earn money. So the real question is, how can banks enable their employees to fulfill their potential? And fourth, transform the operating model. Consider how processes, policies, priorities, technology, and people come together to embed the vision, not just in one silo, across all silos. 21st century banks act more like startups with small, self-managing cells of experts who are able to adapt, innovate, and collaborate. Thanks for joining me on this edition of the Creative Leadership Show. I look forward to seeing you next time when we'll look at another innovation or challenge and explore just how creative it really is.